Welcome back to Nuclear Proliferation Explained. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is how the Hiroshima gun type bomb worked. In the last lecture, I went over how states fuel nuclear weapons. There's only two routes. You either enrich uranium or you reprocess plutonium. In this lecture and the upcoming few lectures, I'm going to explain how states actually assemble nuclear weapons. And we're starting it off with the very first weapon ever delivered, the Hiroshima gun-style bomb. The Hiroshima gun-style bomb went with the enriched uranium route. You will remember that naturally occurring uranium is mostly uranium-238, which is a non-fissile isotope. The goal of uranium enrichment is to get a lot of uranium-235, the fissile isotope, together. And the reason that this is helpful, if you want to have a nuclear explosion, is that uranium-235 spits off neutrons when it splits. If those neutrons hit other uranium-235 atoms, then more neutrons get spit off. And this is what gets you a chain reaction explosion. Let me be a little bit more clear about how that chain reaction works. Imagine that we have an atom of uranium-235. This is unstable. It wants to split. And if we fire a neutron at that atom of uranium-235, it is, in fact, going to split. And when it does, it's going to turn into an atom of barium-142, an atom of krypton-92, and two neutrons. This process also generates a lot of heat, surely by the movement that's occurring very quickly when the atom splits. Okay, now imagine that we have lots of that uranium-235 floating around relatively close to one another. Let's shoot off that neutron once again into one of those atoms. Well, that uranium-235 splits. It produces barium, krypton, and two neutrons. We're only going to be illustrating the neutrons because that's what's important here. When those neutrons get fired off, they can hit another atom of uranium-235. And if they do, well, those atoms tend to split. And when those atoms split, they release two more neutrons. Well, now we have four neutrons, and those four neutrons can look for more uranium-235 to hit. And those that are hit can look for more uranium-235 to hit, and so forth, until we have a full chain reaction and all of our energy is gone because all of those uranium-235 atoms have split. The key question for developing an actual weapon is how to go about starting that chain reaction. For a gun-type bomb, the answer is to shoot one piece of material into another piece of material to start off the chain reaction. Let me show you what I mean. This is a very simplified version of what the inside of the Hiroshima bomb looked like. On one end, we have a hollow cylinder that is made out of this enriched uranium. And on the right end, we have a smaller cylinder that's not hollow, also made out of uranium. Think about this as a donut on the left and a donut hole on the right. In practice, when this is actually in the bomb, that hollow donut is going to be turned to face the donut hole, so that when you're shooting this bigger cylinder that's hollow into the smaller cylinder, they're actually going to fit together. Now, the way that these are constructed, neither of these pieces of uranium are critical in and of themselves. They will not start a nuclear chain reaction by just sitting there. But when you put them together, they do become critical. So these two pieces of subcritical material, when pressed together, become critical, start our chain reaction, and create a bomb. The way that you do this to maximize the amount of chain reactions before you have the explosion to ruin the entire device is by making this gun-type bomb essentially into a cannon. You take a conventional explosive on the left and have it fire off so that you're shooting this donut into the donut hole at a very, very fast rate. And when you do that, now you have two subcritical pieces of material coming together, they become critical, and then you have your chain reaction and you have your explosion. One of the advantages of a gun-type weapon is that it is relatively straightforward to build. In fact, those behind the Manhattan Project were so sure it was going to work, they didn't bother to test it beforehand. They simply constructed the weapon and sent it over to Hiroshima. 
can actually see what it looks like here. It was called Little Boy, and part of the reason for that name is that, in fact, it wasn't that large. This is a couple of people working on it before it was dropped, and you can see, relative to those people for scale, it's not that large of a weapon. So what they did is they just put it on a plane, the Enola Gay, they flew over the target, they dropped the bomb, and then you have the first detonation of a nuclear weapon used offensively. Another advantage of the gun type weapon is that it is durable. As the United States was exploring how to use nuclear weapons, they took advantage of that in a couple of different ways. For one, they tested an artillery style nuclear weapon. So on the right in the foreground, we have a cannon, and in the background, we have a nuclear weapon being detonated. So what they did is they took one of these gun style weapons and they put it into the cannon, they shot off the cannon, and then you have your nuclear explosion. But if you think about this for a second, this is a cannon within a cannon because a gun-style weapon is essentially a fancy cannon that has two pieces of uranium in it. So the cannon shot off the weapon, and then once the weapon reached its target, we had the cannon go off inside the gun-style bomb, which shot those two pieces of subcritical uranium together and caused the explosion. That durability was also useful for the construction of bunker buster-style bombs. So with these, you have a nuclear weapon that's dropped and then rather than exploding above ground, they try to penetrate some of the ground before going off so that they're more likely to be able to destroy bunkers. Well, if you're doing that, there's going to be lots of impact when the missile hits the ground and starts trying to penetrate Earth. And so having a durable weapon ensures the fact that once it has penetrated the Earth, the bomb will actually go off as is wanted. That all being said, gun-type weapons have a significant disadvantage in that they inefficiently convert their nuclear material into an explosion. Think again about how these things are working. You're taking a subcritical donut and shooting it into a subcritical donut hole. Well, it turns out that the nuclear chain reaction doesn't begin when those two pieces are fully together. It starts when they get relatively close together, which means you're not actually getting the full bang for your buck. There's lots of uranium that's in there that's not actually being used toward the explosion because the explosion is going off before those two pieces are fully put together. And due to that inefficient conversion rate, these gun-type weapons are no longer in use today. No state has these deployed. That wraps up this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time when we start talking about how plutonium-based bombs work. Take care.